I am Garima Tripathi and under the subject pharmacompathy and phytochemistry 2 BP 504 T uh, lecture 35 we shall be discussing chromatographic techniques in phytochemistry where adsorption, partition, ion exchange, molecular exclusion, affinity and paper chromatography. So, the term chromatography itself uh, uh, is uh, meant for the separation of the uh, substances or purification. So, it works under the mechanism of like likes the like. So, here in whatever is same will dissolve the similar substance and will separate out. So, the technique in chromatography is a lab technique for complete separation of mixtures uh, which are dissolved in either fluid, gases or any other form and then carried, uh, carried through the system completely. So, the technique cr creates a basis for analysis and separation of wide range of physical methods used in complex mixture. The term chroma says chroma means color and graphy is recording on a, a print media. So, that is how we uh, bifurcate the term chromatography. This uh, term was uh, derived from uh, the very first experiment which was uh, conducted by a Russian scientist to separate the plant coloring, uh, uh, coloring pigments of the leaf. Uh, using n hexane. So, here there are two phases number 1 the stationary phase and number 2 the mobile phase. So, the mobile phase uh, whatever mixture is uh, mixed into the stationary phase the mobile phase will come and it will solvate and whatever is likable to this mobile phase would be carried along with it and will separate out. So, whatever the anything which is having more likability to the stationary phase would be separated at the end and anything which is having the likability for the mobile phase would be separated at the at, at the fastest uh, time schedule. Okay. Next, each component has a characteristic time of passage through the system and this particular passage time is termed as retention time. Now, chromatographic technique is achieved when the retention time of the analyte differs from that of the other components in the sample. Next. The difference in the rate of travel results in the separation of the individual component. Smaller the affinity of the molecule has for the stationary phase shorter time spent in the column. This could also be uh, substituted for the plates in case of planar uh, TLC and paper chromatography. A, pa a chromatogram takes a chemical mixture carried by liquid or gas and separates it into its component parts as a result of differential distribution of the solutes as they flow around or over the stationary liquid or the solid phase. If the right adsorbent material mobile fluid and the operating conditions are employed, any soluble or volatile component can be separated using chromatography. Even structurally similar components can be separated with chromatography. The principle of chromatography differs according to the stationary phase and the mobile phase. Now, throwing light on these uh, typical terms that is adsorbent material. So, the adsorbent material here can be any material like cellulose, then we have silica gel, silica 
gel, we have Kaishalgar, aluminum hydroxide and there are n numbers of list of the adsorbent material available for chromatography which is applicable for any of these either planar or the non planar chromatography. Then we have this stationary phase and the mobile phase defining this characteristics. Since the stationary phase is the fixed phase and here in if this stationary phase is uh, polar in nature and the mobile phase is non-polar in nature, then we classify this kind of chromatography as normal phase chromatography. Now, since we say that if uh, the substance uh, depending upon the type of uh, uh, substance to uh, separate, we may change the phase of the chromatography or the, the and we term it as reverse phase chromatography. So, what is done is the, the uh, polar uh, adsorbent materials or the uh, substances are selenized or methylized and then uh, turned to non-polar and the mobile phase instead of polar uh, non-polar, polar mobile phase is used. So, here you can use uh, this uh, stationary phase polar mobile phase non-polar in normal phase chromatography. Next is the term retention factor. Let us see here, retention is nothing but a measure of speed at which the compound moves in a chromatographic system. In continuous development systems like HPLC or GC, where the compounds are eluted with the eluent, the retention is usually measured as the retention time RT and this is the time between the injection and detection of the substance that is injection means addition uh, uh, or sample application and detection when it is identified that it is separated out. Now, there are two terms. Eluent, eluted and eluent. Elute means removal. Elute means removal of the substance. That means removal of the al analyte. And eluent is the solvent, what you say, solvent or the substance which carries this particular substance away. So, that is called as eluent the solvent which will remove it or which will carry it eluent and what is obtained is termed as eluate. Okay? Now, every time a chromatography in case of column chromatography every in a specific time schedule we take various fractions where uh, there could be A plus B then we have here B plus C after some particular time C plus D or sometimes plain D, every time a different uh, 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 different fraction is eluted out, each fraction is detected. This we shall discuss in the uh, uh, coming uh, topics of column chromatography. Just to make you understand that uh, at the point of injection and when it is detected will be termed as the retention time. For this fraction A, B, the retention time would be T1, while for B, C, the retention time will be different that is T2, since it would be detected at this time frame and vice, uh, and similarly for D, maybe it will be T4. Okay. Next term is the retention factor Rf. In an uninterrupted developmental systems like TLC, TC that is paper chromatography, the retention system is measured as retention factor Rf and the run length of the compound 
is divided by the run length of the eluent front. So, RF is defined as the distance travelled by the solute divided by the distance travelled by the solvent. So, let us uh, give a little light on this. What do you mean by uninterrupted developmental system? What we do we mean? See, in case of column chromatography, column chromatography, it is we have the control to take the eluent at our discretion of the time frame. But once a, a planner chromatography, once a planner or planner chromatographic system has already been started, there is no control. Once we have uh, 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 kept the paper or a TLC plate for development in a solvent system, it will be un uninterrupted. The components will separate at its own discretion and then we will finally detect when the given uh, length is already achieved. So, that is called as, so here in such cases, we calculate the retardation or the retention factor, retention factor. So, it is needful to mention here that there are uh, on the basis of plane, we can divide the chromatography into planner, planner chromatography and non-planner or open column chromatography. Under this planner chromatography, which is a 2D type of chromatography, we have thin layer chromatography, we have paper chromatography, we have circular paper chromatography, circular TLC chromatography, while in non-planner or open column, we have all the liquid chromatography. Like HPLC, high performance liquid chromatography, the basic one column chromatography, CC, then we have GC, gas chromatography, we have GLC, gas liquid chromatography, etc. Okay? So, all these come under the category of column or open tube chromatography. So, here are based on the principle of separation, chromatography can be classified number 1 as adsorption chromatography and it is the oldest type of chromatography around where the mobile phase or mobile liquid or gaseous phase gets adsorbed onto a surface of a stationary solid phase. Believing that this is the silica or any solid phase of cellulose paper, the stationary phase SP will get adsorbed onto these phase when the sample is applied that time this gets adsorbed and the equilibration between the mobile and stationary phase accounts for the separation of different solvents. That means once this gets adsorbed the mobile phase is passed through it, it this mobile phase uh, will detach the adsorbing material supposingly this is A, this is B. And if it solubilizes, it will be taken at the faster, uh, faster speed than the B component which will solubilize in the later. So, A would be elu eluated fast as it is having the affinity or likability, likability with the mobile phase more and less likability with the adsorption or the stationary phase. So, depending on this, the separation of the solute will takes place. Next is the partition chromatography. Again, this is based on the principle uh, of uh, partitioning or uh, separating or distributing a solute into two different layers. Okay, let us have a look. It is based on thin film form on the surface of solid support 
by a liquid stationary phase, the solute equilibrates between the mobile phase and the stationary phase. Now, here what happens? Uh, uh, what happens that uh, supposingly a glass slide is kept, or maybe a column is there where silica with n hexa uh, silica with a stationary phase any stationary phase is there or a silica with any stationary phase uh, like in case of TLC it is uh, uh, it is kept here. So, once the mobile phase starts running above it, so there will be solvation equilibration between the solvation of the this mobile phase and the stationary phase and depending on that the separation will take place. So, if mobile phase is running through this, it will partition between the two layers, okay, stationary phase and mobile phase. So, the, if the solute will distribute, okay, and it will go into the start going into the mobile phase till an equilibrium is established between this and this mobile phase will uh, carry along with it and this particular equilibration will depend upon the partition coefficient again this can depend on the partition ability and solvation ability of the solute into the mobile phase. Next is the ion exchange chromatography. So, this is uh, uh, it is a type and a very atypical type of chromatography where the solid support instead of cellulose or uh, starch or any other adsorbent like silica, keshalgar, uh, a resin is used. Okay? Here the solid stationary solid phase is resin is used and it is uh, used to covalent, covalently attach anions or cations onto it since the name suggests ion. So, here the exchange of solute does not take place, but there is ions that play into uh, a major role. So, uh, it looks like this supposingly a resin. So, this resin is a polymer like substances where an anion or cation would be attached and they and once the mobile phase comes in, in uh, it will take away mainly the anions and then uh, elude the anions. Such ion exchange chromatography is called as anion exchange chromatography and this will happen only if the covalent bond with the resin is broken and the anion is carried with the or the cation is carried with the uh, mobile phase. So, let us see here. The solute ions of the opposite charge in the mobile phase are attracted to the resin by electrostatic forces. Next type is molecular exclusion chromatography. Now, if we describe it like the surface of adsorbent where various molecules of various shapes are there. Okay. Now, this molecular exclusion chromatography is highly specific and selective you may say that it would among the so many different types of molecules a specific shaped molecules would get excluded on the surface of the stationary phase. Okay. So, this is also termed as <coughs> gel permeation or gel filtration. And this type of chromatography lacks an attractive interaction between the stationary phase and the solute. The liquid or gaseous phase passes through a porous gel which separates the molecule according to its size. The pores here are normally small and exclude the larger solutes any larger solutes would be excluded out, okay. but allow smaller molecules to enter into the gel causing them to flow through the larger volume. 
this causes the larger molecules to pass away first through the column at a faster rate than the smaller ones. Next is affinity chromatography. Again, this is highly and most selective type of chromatography which utilizes specific interaction between one kind of solute molecule and the second molecule that is immobilized on a stationary phase. Okay. For example, immobilized uh, immobilization of an antibody to some specific protein. So, here only one antibody very specific, very selective could be separated out and hence it is a from a mixture of molecules and hence it is a very selective type. Okay, the protein which is later extracted by changing the ionic strength or pH, they are different types of chromatographic methods like paper chromatography, thin layer chromatography, column chromatography, high performance liquid chromatography, gas chromatography, high performance thin layer chromatography or HPTLC. This is termed as HPLC. Nowadays, ultra high performance UPLC and such uh, advanced methods are available and all these methods are used for analysis, separation and isolation of components in the natural products. Again, discussing the type of uh, chromatography, the first and the basic one is the paper chromatography. It is highly advantageous of the paper chromatography as it is highly convenient in carrying out separation for a large amount of substances simply on sheets of the filter paper and it serves both as the medium for separation as well as the support. <coughs> the technique was extended to maximum classes and uh, here uh, the spots near one end of the prepared filter paper strip is applied. Usually several sample and standard spots are placed along the edge. Then chromatogram is developed that is a paper uh, recording is developed by immersing the edge of the paper in the solvent that migrates through the paper as the mobile phase. Let us see, the solvent often has two or three components, one of which is usually water and the development is normally done in a chamber. The very commonly applied solvent preferred is for paper chromatography is BAW 4 is to 1 is to 5 and butanol acetic acid and water that is what we are communicating here. Ki uh, generally uh, and since here the stationary phase what we are using is cellulose, cellulose and uh, the cellulose acts as the stationary phase and the moisture in present in the water again. So, that is the stationary phase, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, this is the common uh, solvent system BAW used for paper chromatography. Next, the water forms the solvent in particular is absorbed tightly on the paper fiber and the sample components partition between the waters of the cellulose and the uh, water of the and the BAW. They partition between the moisture present here and the solvent system or the mobile phase after the separation strongly colored spots are visible on the chromatogram. Colorless materials can be visualized either by heating the paper on a oven or uh, uh, which leaving charred black spots. Sometimes paper is sprayed with the solution of sulfuric acid for better charring or any other reagent to visualize the uh, substance separated. There are other methods also like fluorescent materials can be used. Uh, making the visualization better with the ultraviolet ray, uh, uh, light. Reagents specific for certain components may be sprayed on the co colored spots like we spray ninhydrin 
ninhydrin reagent for amino acids. Similar is the example of the sugars, then in case of alkaloids we spray Dragenhoff reagent etcetera. Okay. Radioactive spots can be located with a detector and the chromatogram can be pressed against X-ray films for minutes or hours to expose the film. The sample spots can be tentatively identified if they have the same RF values known as the standard spots. So, here is the uh, diagram for the paper chromatography. We can see here this is the developmental tank, this is the stationary mobile phase or the BAW or the solvent. The paper is hung from here, the spot is applied from the two cent leaving 2 centimeters of distance, the spot is applied. This spot should not touch the solvent. Uh, bed of the uh, in the developmental chamber and once the mobile phase starts uh, moving upwards the, it will carry along with it the most likable ones uh, and then finally they will get separated out. Generally the paper uh, in case of TLC and paper chromatography we follow 20 into 20 for preparatory 10 into 20 filter papers or sometimes 5 into 10 and along this length complete 10 almost this running 8, 8 centimeters or when we are choosing a 20, uh, 20 centimeter plate uh, almost 16 to 18 centimeter of the solvent run uh, after that the chromatogram is taken and uh, taken for visualization. The visualization can be of two types as already mentioned. It can be simple with light or with chemical treatment as mentioned. Okay. So, this chemical treatment is also called as derivatization. We will follow this terms in TLC or thin layer chromatography mode and the variation with light could be visible UV short and UV long. This paper chromatography have many variants like ascending, descending type of paper chromatography. There are two di dimensional development also where first the solvent front is run in this, the uh, points or the separation will, uh, will be achieved in this direction. Then it is inverted and the uh, another second type of solvent system is run through this and here again re separation will take place and these are called as two dimensional separation. Then we also have the separation using circular paper chromatography. This is in particularly applicable for the substances where the RF value difference is very less. For example, sugars where the minute difference of 0 0.01, 0 0.06, that kind of minute difference of the RF values will be present. Then we have this amino acids also essential amino acids because of small functional change there will be lesser difference and uh, so there this particular paper or uh, chromatography is helpful to separate uh, in radial fashion and again this the passage is calculated as the movement radially um, uh, uh, as the retardation factor. So, these are some of the important uh, uh, discussion regarding the chromatographic techniques. With this I must wind up. Thank you.